Next source number 70, files as functions. Alternately titled functions as files. Tell me exactly how to say that. This uh, data is independent of flakes, whether you're in flakes mode or non flakes mode. Uh, unlike many other languages, functions in Nix can be themselves composed as a file. And when I say that, I don't mean that the file contains a function or a set of functions or whatever, although it can, uh, it means the file is a function. What do I mean by that? Well, friends, as a demonstration, before we split things across files, let's assume that we have this crap in our NixOS configuration.nix or some, some subfile there, thereof, if you've gone on to glorious things with your Nix configuration. Um, and let's assume that we want to create a derivation using this function called packages write text file. And then we want to put its location inside our environment variable. This is a very suspect thing to do. This is a totally hello world demo thing to do, but we're, do, we're going to do it. So I'm going to change my own configuration, my very own configuration to do such a thing. And uh, by the way, a link to this talkie script on the left hand side, the thing entitled NixOS 70 files as functions will be available in the link to the description. So let me change my, my configuration here. I'm going to copy this stuff over. And this is my, it's called common.nix because I've factored my stuff to all hell and back. But in your case, if you're just starting out with Nix, it'll probably be called configuration.nix. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, and inside of there, I have, you know, the, the, the thing that I probably have in common with yours is that I have a number of curly brackets up top with a colon at the end. And then I, you probably have some of this stuff in here, let, and then this mysterious thing called in, eh, where the, in here, and then another set of curly brackets, and then some other stuff ended with a curly bracket, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to put some of this stuff in the let portion of my config. It's my files. I'm going to get rid of this stuff because I already have that at the top in the hair. Top there. I'm going to get rid of lit. let. I already have the let. And I want to put this stuff inside of my existing in. All right. So we can see that we are telling Nix to write a text file to it to the well we can't see it but we can imply that we are telling Nix to write a text file and the place it's going to write that text file to is the Nix store uh, by virtue of this write text file function which is a wrapper around something called make derivation um, and the name of this thing that's going to be included inside the Nix store name is my file and the text inside the file is going to be this is my file hey imagine that so, uh, if we were just to put this stuff here, by the way, gratuitous aside, and we didn't reference my file anywhere within this in section here, if I didn't put this down here, took that out, that would have no effect at all. It wouldn't write the text file. Things in Nix are extremely lazy, and they're not evaluated until they were referred to in a place where it'll actually make a difference. So, by virtue of me saying environment session variables equal curly bracket, my file, my file, what I'm trying to tell it to do is I'm trying to tell it, put an environment variable in my environment named all uppercase my file with the location of the derivation that is created via packages, write text file. Got it? Got it. Good. Okay. So, uh, now that I've done that and I can see through my little wondrous checky thing that my syntax is good. I can go and, uh, let's see, let's see next to us. Those are the changes I made. Just get rid of this white space. Not that it matters. Nix doesn't care, but I do. Uh, and now I'm going to run NixOS rebuild switch. Do do NixOS rebuild switch. Okay, give the gods some time to think. Well, son of a bitch, it worked. So at this point, you would imagine, 
as I mentioned to you before, that we would have a environment variable in our in our session variables named my file. And we do. If that doesn't show up for you, you may need to log out and log back in if you're playing along at home. So just FYI. So at this point, um, that worked for us. Now, what does this have to do with functions as files? Well, I'm going to take the stuff that we just put in there and I'm going to put it in its own file. I'm going to actually move this stuff right out of here. It doesn't need to be there. And put it in its own file. Uh, and we're going to see by my doing that, that files can be functions. So I'm going to create a file. I'm going to take this out of here, first of all. I'm going to call it my file. Nix. It's right alongside of the file that uh, for me is called common.nix. Yours is probably called configuration.nix. It's right next to it. And I'm going to put this little argument header up here and say that I I'm going to put the let in here and I'm going to say my file. Like that. Now, you you old school Nix people, I know, I know. Just stick with me here. I'm just trying to demonstrate. I get it. I know. I don't. I know. I have to do. Don't have to do the let in thing. It's fine. We'll get there. Um, but given that we have this file now, and given that my little green thingy says it's good syntax, we can go back into my common Nix, and we can actually cause it to be imported more or less. We could say packages, call package. And we could say, and this is a path, I file that next, not in quotes, just bare with a dot slash in front of it. So it knows it's in the current directory. Like that. And I think if we run it now, we will end up in the same place. Let's see. That's, oh, so, I'm sorry, SWNIX is the same as NixOS switch, switch rebuilds. Okay. All right, I need to add it to my, it's my file next to my git before it'll be recognized. If your, if your configuration is in a git repository, you do need to add your files to that git repository for them to be... Notice if you were in flakes mode, and boy, is that a sentence to think of. So let's see if it, now I think, I think in reality, I would have to log out and log back in for it to update the next door of this, my file thing. Well, maybe not, not sure, but trust me, it works if you want to. Test for yourself, you log out, log back in. It would screw up my OBS thing, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, so what happened here? What did we do? Well, we moved uh, the call to packages dot write. What do we call it? Packages dot write text file out here into this file that also has this this sort of argument header here that looks suspiciously like the one I have in common Nix, except with many fewer arguments, but it's, it's a, a curly bracket, a name, comma, and then maybe an ellipse, usually those three dots mean an ellipse, close, close curly bracket, colon. And what that says is this is a, and this is, this is where the, this, this video gets tricky because this thing doesn't have a name. Uh, you call it a Nix file. Other places, people refer to it as module. So sometimes you'll call you know, like as in call package, you'll see it referred to as a package, whatever. But it is a file with this fucking hair up at the top of it. And whatever you choose to call it, hey, I'm not going to complain because nobody else fucking knows either. But that's what it is. So um, in any case, because it has that hair at the top, what it means is that it is callable via that thing that we used out over here that is called call package package is call package it can also be uh this is this is effectively an import it can also be something like uh, packages or 
import that. I don't think that's necessary anymore, although it might be, I forget. I'm not going to show that here because call package is the super import, the magical import that kind of like, if you're just, if you're just hacking around, man, you're like, just use call package. Don't bother with import. Like, yeah, it, I'm sure that'll bug people, but yeah, just do that. So we're going to do that. Um, call package, uh, my file and right. And this, what this is here, there's these two curly brackets. If you, if you happen to need to pass in extra arguments to, to the function, let's say, um, if I had this inside of my file, I could say, I'm a SQL UBC driver. So if it, if it didn't happen to be passed down through this list of, of things in here, I can, I can assure it gets it by, I think it's, I think maybe this is a simpler spelling of it, but it's SQL OBC. ODBC driver equals that. That's that's basically what I was trying to do. Inherit is just a shorter spelling of that. So, but we're not trying to do any of that. We're just trying to call it without any special arguments. Call package will handle most of the arguments for us. So all that works. Now, what does that actually mean? Okay, we moved it into a file. But what does the file mean? This took me quite some time to understand. And I'm not a a unseasoned programmer, I guess. I mean, I've been doing stuff for a long time. Um, and I've, you know, I've used Pascal. I know what it means. For, I've used Perl. I know what it means for the last evaluated value to be the return value. I get it. I get it. But what really sort of confused me was the syntax of such a thing. So what we are saying here, and, and I said before, uh, people who know, know next will be yelling about this let in. What we're saying here is the last evaluated statement in this file and nothing between this let and in are actually evaluated until you, until they're, they're referenced down here in the actual body of this thing. So we're saying evaluate my file. And what my file does is it goes ahead and writes this text file and returns it, 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 it realizes itself as a derivation inside the next store. So this would be easier spelled as this. Get rid of let in like that. <clears throat> and we don't need a semicolon anymore. And now if I run it again, the, the last statement, which is in this file, the last thing to be evaluated is what's returned packages right text file and so we're going to return exactly the same thing as we did before which was my file we're just not using the let in convention so i'm going to run next os rebuild switch again that's just an alias for it All right <laughs> yeah forgot to take this out and the ellipse here helps us capture things that we don't care about. They'll be passed in as well. If I didn't put the ellipse there, it would complain at me as well. Okay, and we're effectively back at the same place we were before. We just have a simpler file. So, um... One of the things that really sort of confused me about this, although I am not a very good docs reader. Um, I can write docs pretty well. I just can't read them too well. Uh, but I had thought that sort of the syntax where you have an opening curly brace and then some, some real statements in here was, was sort of a language feature and that these curly bra braces that meant something they do not well they do um let's see uh what these mean isn't q 
here's the stuff that goes inside of this file, which is where I was originally. <laughs> what they mean is I'm returning an attribute set, which for normal people, if anyone had a sense, they would have called it a dictionary, but no, it's an attribute set. And I know why they call it an attribute. It's not a dictionary because it's a multi-level. I get it, but it just should have just called it a dictionary. It just would have been simpler. It's a dictionary. And what we're saying is the result of this function, which is now a file, returns a dictionary or an attribute set, All right? So these things are not special. They are just signifying that what the thing is, that is the last value of statement, is an attribute set, and now it's not. Now it's, a der now it's a derivation. So I don't think I have anything else to tell you about it, do I? All right, so I'm sorry about all the swearing, um, but I think this is, hopefully this is useful to you. Thanks for watching.